Hello everybody, this is Benjamin Hernandez, or Tigbun, for Cards and Cardboard Reviews. Um, huh. Okay, um, well, this is a tabletop simulator. So this is a physics-based uh, tabletop simulation, uh, is the best way to describe it. So we're going to take you into a tutorial and kind of show you how the game is actually dealt with. So, here's the tutorial. You pick up cards using your left mouse cut button. You can scroll in and out. Uh, this shows you how much you can move around. This is your lift weight, uh, so that way you can show how high you li actually lift things up. So you can actually keep it closer to the table. I'm not sure if there's any way to edit this outside of there. You can kind of rotate your card using the scroll wheel. You can flip it over by pressing F. And you can put it right on top of the deck of cards there. So, yeah. And we can basically pull from this deck now by doing that, and we can flip to show that. So, boop. And we can basically kind of left click and hold, and we pick up everything here, and then we can shuffle by doing this, you know, kind of wiggling it around. Now we can do that, and then we grab another single card. Boop. See? But we can also do it in a way where we can kind of flip things over here. You gotta be very particular how you select things here. Oh, that's right. You just click and hold, so. Boop. So we'll shuffle. Hmm. Alright, so shuffle again. And we're gonna click and we're gonna deal. So we're gonna... Well, actually, we're just gonna draw to myself here. So, boom. So, we actually have a card in our hand now. Which we use WASDA, or W-A-S-D, to move around. And This is hidden. No one can see this, except for us. Uh, so, here's our die. We can shake it, uh, and give that a roll. So, again, we can kind of look around, we press space to reset the camera. Use, use your scroll wheel and other things. Hold Alt while looking at an object, or while holding an object. Okay, I see. Oh, and then we can use Q or E to rotate that. Hold an object, press right. Oh, more than one object. So now we got the die and the thing. Go away. Go go away. You can throw things, obviously. Thing on your strength and lift hand. You can also click and drag and pick things up. Uh, I cast one d6 horse. Ah, oh, sideways d4 horse. All right, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, we got right contextual things, so we can actually see what kind of materials our things are, if it locks to a grid, if it's part of the snap, if it's sticky, persistent. We can actually save things, we can also tint the color. We can also affect the physics on it. So that's all you have to do to really play the game. You got different little things here. You got your mouse tool, you got your vector point, which allows you to actually draw on the table, which you don't want that. You got your pixel paint, which allows you to Again, draw more stuff here, and we can get rid of that. It's not the highest resolution for that, because it's, of course, trying to draw a texture on a texture, but hey, whatever. So we got our zones here. This is where you kind of set up areas in the game. Now this is our hidden zone, so this is available only for us to see, and we can go back up to uh, the hand thing here and see now we can kind of move things into our hidden zone. Uh, and as far as, like, getting rid of it, we just click and there it goes. So that's a good way of kind of setting up your area in the game is you select your camera view. So, uh, boop, boop, boop. We're gonna go ahead and just kind of click and drag. So now our card's hidden to everybody, so now no one will really see it. So we got our different various colors here and who they're available to see. So the game master is obviously us, although it's for some reason not just showing that. 
And we got our little hand areas, so we can actually draw out how big our hand area is. Or we can even remove it. So, of course, we want a big hand area here. Boop, boop, boop. And we'll just get rid of that. We got line tools, so we can actually see where things are. You know, for measurement, if you're doing, like, uh, miniatures games in particular, that's a great idea. Uh, we got the flick command, which allows us to kind of click and flick. And so you click the object and you put a height on it. You can do this for Crokinole. So you can actually play kind of a legit tabletop Crokinole with its own little physics here, and you can flick just about anything. Oh, and... Okay, that's off the table. Can we actually get that? Oh, okay. So you got the join tool, which you can actually link things together, I believe. So when we actually kind of pick up and move things now... Oop. Yeah. So now we got the die and the thing. So yeah, they're joined together. Got the text where we can actually go, like, bugger. MB Traitor. Or, no. MB bugger. That, that works. Boop, boop, boop. Got a point tool, which allows us to draw point to points. So we can actually kind of pick things up and move them to the point. Oh, wait. Oh, this is actually for making the snaps. So you can actually rotate where things snap to and how things snap. So if you're playing things to a grid, so in this case we're going to go ahead and grab our guy here. and It, see, it tries to move over here now. It tries to actually rotate and snap onto these little locked areas that you can't see. Um, and then we have our gizmo. This allows us to kind of just... Mm, change things as you would in a basic 3D modeling tool. So this is a move axis. This one's the rotate axis, which allows us to kind of go wee around, you know, like with spin on X, Y, and Z. So in this case, whoa. Yeah. So that's that's really all there is to uh, kind of start playing tabletop simulator. So we're going to actually go in and uh, load a thing. So we're going to exit the main menu. And uh, we're going to just do a single player game here. So we're actually going to look at our games that we have available. So here's all the games that are currently uh, here as of the game. Uh, this is all the various tools and piece packs and things that you can use to play. Uh, pretty, pretty simple games. Uh, but then there's also the official DLC. Uh, as you can see, I've got a few locked. Uh, but I have something here called Cosmic Encounter, which we have the basic and Cosmic Incursion. So we're going to load up Cosmic Encounter, and you'll be able to see what it's like to actually see Cosmic Encounter on a tabletop simulator. So now we're just kind of waiting for everything to load. So as you can see here, we kind of got our little table set up here. We got five player areas for our little cards. We got our little place over here where we can see all of the things for the game, including a copy of the rulebook. Isn't that neat? You can kind of actually scroll through here and learn to play Cosmic Encounter right here as the rulebook. And it's actually viewing the actual PDF on the internet. So, um, that is really cool. Now, the Cosmic Connector was a Kickstarter project a while back where they were trying to make something kind of like this uh, for people to play with. And this is what we got as a result. We have zero Cosmic Encounters. Can we actually pick this up? Or as the host, I should be able to like pick things up, or things might be locked, so we can actually probably unlock things. So let's uh, do, do, do. Oh, let's shuffle those first of all. Okay, yeah. So we got got the sticky on, so we can actually toggle sticky off here, and so we should be able to pick those up now. So we actually have all the alien cards here. We'll shuffle them. So these are the alien special powers. So what we want to do here is we want to deal out one to like all the seated players. So in most player games, you're going to go like, okay, well, what player color am I? So I got to actually decide that. So as the host, uh, oh, that's actually. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. So we actually are going to change our color. So I get to choose a color. I'm going to choose purple. So now I'm purple. So we want to deal out an alien card to purple. So, and we can actually deal one to all, so all who's available. So boop, everyone gets their special alien power dealt out to them. So 
this case, I am the reincarnator. So again, we can kind of look at this, we can see it up close, we can rotate it, we can flip it if we need to. Over here we got the special locked positions for our ships, so they actually will stack on top of each other. We can click and move an entire stack of ships. We can click one and pull them off one by one. We can fling them around, stack them up on top of each other. Yeah, again, so you can wrangle them. You can actually shuffle these too if you really want. It's kind of clever. So, uh, anyways, we got our little thing here. Again, we use the scroll wheel to rotate it. Now, the only thing I find a little tricky about this game is, of course, our old good old friend, the flare cards here. So, we're actually going to go in here, and we're going to flip those over. Actually, entirely flip them over. So. And we'll find it eventually. Well, the basic idea is somewhere in here... Uh, oh, we can actually search. Okay, so we're doing the search function. So we are looking for a very specific card called the Filch Wild. So there's actually two. So this is the... Yep, okay. So we'll pull these out right now. So, boop, boop. So here's the classic one, as you can see. So this is something I always keep bringing up uh, whenever they try to do a version of this cosmic encounter thing. So we're going to stop the search here and put the cards back. So, okay, take an opponent's used card. Uh, you may cheat. You may take your ships from the warp or cards from the deck or discard pile, even if you're not entitled to them. If you're caught in the act, you lose one ship to the warp and return things in there. So that's that's kind of a way of doing it. Now, that's just the regular one. If you are the super fish, you may steal other players using counter cards whether or not they're involved in the counter or not. So, that's kind of a nifty thing. Um, but if you're going by what some people would call the, the traditional way of saying things in this game, you actually should be able to steal cards and just cheat in general. <laughs> that's kind of one of the little weird things that uh, happen in Cosmic Encounter. So, I could try to, like, say, steal a card from here or, you know somehow maybe uh, just say uh, that's that's in the warp you know you had that in the warp the whole time if they catch me doing it then of course I gotta reveal that and say oh well shoot and I lose all the stuff here um, that's kinda one of those nifty little things but if you put have the various uh, cards in their hand here so we actually wanna like deal one two three four five okay so everyone's got five cards now. It, actually, we should do eight, just because that's the way the game is. I'm not sure why the blue player is getting multiples, but that probably is because it got stuck on here. <laughs> so actually, let's select half those and just give them to the green player. So I'm not sure if people can actually see these or not, but I actually have my own hidden area here if I want. But again, your hand. So. I should be able to kind of just go over here and uh, just casually steal one of their cards. If they catch me, then of course I'm in trouble, but... Uh, actually, no, that that actually solves that problem right there. If they have it in their secret area, then they're fine, but if they have it in their hand, you can still kind of, you know, eh, this is my card. <laughs> so, as I said, you got all your different cards over here. You got a bunch of tokens for various effects, you've got your destiny cards. Which you can... I'm not sure if there's a quick way of setting this up or not, because you are dealing with a game where basically you're going to be playing with about five people, or six, or seven, or eight, which I believe Tabletop Simulator actually maxes out at. But those require the expansions. But what we got here is a deck of cards, and we're going to kind of maybe... Uh, well, let's, let's search for them, because what we can do is actually find the cards that we don't need. So... Like, here's all the yellow player's cards. Here's all the red player's cards. So let's say the red player's not playing, so... We'll just have to take those out. Boom. Okay, that's easy enough. We can stop searching. We can actually save that to the chest for when we're playing a certain color or number of games. We can shuffle that. Do a cut. Shuffle again. And put them all back on top of each other. Here, just gotta rotate them. It's like, okay, uh, it's my turn. I draw my first destiny card, so I just flip that over. Press F, boom. So I'm going after blue. So I choose... Uh, how about this planet? 
and I'm going to send uh, one, two, three ships. Let's get those on top of each other. So, yep. Yeah, that's the thing. You got to click and hold a bit, so you got to be worried about it. Okay, so I'm going to go here. Um, okay. Oh no, uh, how about Red? Red, you join the ally side. Okay, well, we'll put one there. And uh, Green's going to throw in one just because they want to join in as well. Yellow's going to go ahead and put one on the defending side. So, there you go. That's how the warp space cone kind of works, if you're familiar with the game rules. And then it's like, okay, I pick this card. Oh no, you're negotiating. Well, I picked... Well, actually, let's just select my entire hand here and flip it over. And just... We'll be random about this. We'll actually just select all the cards here and put it on a stack here. Again, try to... Eh. Yeah, it's a little hard to get on the stack. There we go. So... And... Okay, we played a zap for some reason, and then we did an attack of one. Well, we win, so all these ships here, we'll just kind of click them all and hold them and throw those to the warp, uh, as well as the yellow one. I'm not sure if there's like a quick way of moving them around, but it would be kind of nice if there was like a quick move, but we still have access to the hand tool. Uh, so obviously we get to put our ships there, and then we also get alien tracks here from our allies. Uh, all the cards we played... Yep. Okay, I think I... yeah, of course we don't have the flares in right now, so... Uh, we'll just bring out this the cosmic deck out and stuff that in there. There we go. So. Boom! That just that easy. Uh, these go into the discard pile. Or, well, screw it. <laughs> uh, we move up the point tracker for the purple, uh, for green, and for red. Yep, uh, red. There you go. And yellow and purple, or blue, we can keep there. And there you go. And it's like, okay, well, next turn, oh, it's Red's turn. I'll take a ship from the warp and put it back on any plane I want, like over here. Boop. <laughs> so that's just that's just Tabletop Simulator in a nutshell. It's a really great little experience. A lot of people are using it for uh, various games, like social deduction games, or, again, these official mods here. So we could actually play Tiny Epic Galaxies or Euphoria. And actually, for the price of the game, uh, it's not a bad deal. Uh, I think I paid about $2 for Cosmic Encounter because it was on sale, um, and I can play with people online, as long as we all agree. So here's Euphoria, again, we can play that for 8 bucks. Now, I, of course the issue is of, you know, who's doing what, and, you know, what kind of options are there really? Um, I'm not sure what we should throw out here just to show off. Again, it would be kind of nice to have, like, a crokinole board or something. Uh, we actually might be able to find one, so... Let's go... Oh, yeah, there we go. Tabletop crokinole. This is actually the workshop games I actually have. These are things that people have put into the game. So, here's our crokinole board. So, pretty great. So we can go ahead and, you know, line up our shot here. And put that there, and we get our flick tool. And we're gonna flick it like so. Ah! So close. Oh, wait. <laughs> we actually have to pick up the keys. I wish I knew the quick keys, because there are quick keys of the game, but... Again, this is not the best way of doing things, but... Uh, we're gonna try to knock the white guy out. Oh! <laughs> that went totally off the table! <laughs> okay, so again, a little fun to be had here and there. I might actually try to play this with more people, and try to figure out my shots here. So, obviously, we're gonna rotate our camera here. Um, actually, how do I do that? Um, is it alt? Oh, nope. Uh, let's look at tools here. Let's find the control scheme. So here's actually all the controls. Here's the quick keys and everything. So we want to do a rotate. So we actually want to do Q and E to rotate around, which is not how that works. We actually got to look for the camera. 
Oh man. So hidden areas, arrow tools, line tools, camera pan, camera pan, uh, A S and D, camera fly down, first person view. Oh, I didn't know that was an option. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, I got a little thing there. Actually, I might have to set up something. Um, controls. So again, we can actually rebind the keys here. Uh, change our pointers, our little blocks, line size, the UI. So in this case, we actually want to go into anything that would require our middle mouse button and actually change that up because my middle mouse button doesn't work. So whoopsie on me. Oh, well. Um, rotate left, rotate right. Again, that doesn't really help us out with the camera controls. And, you know, there's also the zoom, magnify, text, uh, voice chat, and text chat. Pretty great stuff there. RPG mode, alpha 1, or keypad 1. That's interesting. Let's try that. So, um, not actually doing anything. Oh, okay, there we go. So this is how we kind of rotate. It's right click. So we're going to line up our shot here with our crokinole board. So change our lift height maybe a little less there, just because we don't want to pick it up that high. So we'll make sure we're on there, at least half over. Choose our flick and say about that far and flick. Yeah, there you go. See, now we're crokinole. And then we'll pick up another disc here. And uh, we gotta decide how we want to line the shot up. Okay, well obviously we're gonna kinda get down low here. Pick that up. Move it forward just a little bit because we get a little shadow effect. Get our flick tool. Make sure we line up our angle here. And pull it back just about that far. And boom! Okay, that's a bad example. <laughs> I'm terrible at crokinole as it is, but I think a tabletop version is even worse because, again, you have a limited amount of forces that you can apply. Okay, those are actually overlapping, so that would be a legal play, but we want to get a big kick on there just to see what it looks like, so. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. That's just awful. Okay, you square one, so put it on the bank here. Oh, eh, you actually have calculators too, so that's pretty cool. So we rotate around again. There's another table in the background for some reason. Okay, so obviously we gotta make a shot here. Boom! But that's just, just kind of showing you where the physics are actually working. So you can actually change your shot, change your angle. Again, since Crokinole is a game where you are limited to your seat, it's a little unfair to pay it, play it on the tabletop simulator, but... You know, you got no options, you might as well Try it out. And you know, you can just have fun. <laughs> okay, and of course the ever impressive will find a better thing to do this year. So let's change the game. Let's find out what we have in the workshop. I have Gears of War the board game, which I do actually own, Dead Winter, which I also own. Uh, Crokinole, I have a set. I do not have my Mystics or Pandemic to Cure, so sorry, I've been meaning to get those. Uh, I haven't actually played these games in any way on Tabletop Simulator, but let's show off Gears of War the board game. This is going to be kind of great. So, I know it's a bit of a longer review here, but it's kind of fun because we're loading up all these assets, showing off where everything is. And this is a super simplified version of Gears of War the board game but for good reason, because it's got a lot of assets to it. So again, things kind of lag when things are loading too, so... Ugh, that's, that's the drag. You gotta have like a decent network connection, and once everything's loaded though, you're pretty well set. So here's our Gears of War the board game. We got our little board here. We got our doors, ammo, Grenades, merchants' holes, the line of sight counter, ruler, and then each of the little things in here. Actually, we want to flick that. Uh, is that an actual stack of things? Huh. 
to say it should be wound marker, wound marker. Oh, hey, that one has a drop. Uh, and then we got our little <laughs> paper standees for every monster in the game. That's kind of great. And there's our Berserker model, which is much less threatening. So the question is, is how do we get our map tiles out? Ah, there it is. So we got our A side, B side. We got our A side, B side. And every time you do it, it takes a little time to load, but... So we'll look at our little scenario cards here. So we don't want to do the horde modes, because those are silly for now. Don't want to do Roblox. Let's set up the... Oh, emergence? Oh, that China shop. That's the one I was thinking of. It's like, okay, we need... Locations A7, A... Uh, A6, so... Well, we got A1, which we don't need, so... We'll just kind of throw that back in the box here. Actually, we want to search, don't we? Uh, there's no way to search. That's the problem. So, there's 4, 12, 3. Uh, you know, actually, this is a great idea. Let's just throw out all these tiles out here so we know where they're all at. And it's also going to be impressive for when we're actually doing the finale for this tabletop simulator. Now again, this, since this is a physics-based kind of game, you are dealing with the fact that, well, honestly, people will be able to pick up, move around, and uh, overall mess things up here. And of course, since things get messed up, you know, you get a messy table, too. But that's where, you know, that's what you get for playing a game like this. And you just flip the table, like literally all the table and all its contents just go flying. But of course we can also go back a step and... There, good as new, see? I'm not sure how well this backup step works, but... You know, you gotta do what you gotta do. So it's like, okay, well we don't want that dice roll anymore, so do we go back a step? Didn't affect our dice roll. And now our entire table's gone. I think we messed up the simulator. Oh, no, there it is. See, your dice back here. Okay, we rolled five attacks versus how many defense? Uh, four defense. Why not? Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, do these have the symbol on them? That's a good question. Uh, that was alt, right? Oh, yeah, they do have the little symbol on them. Oop. <laughs> Sorry, folks, I kind of alt-tabbed out here. Uh, that was a mistake. I think, yeah. So, they do have the symbol on them there. For the gear omen symbol. Um, is it a perfect solution? No. But is it fun? Does it have a lot of mods that people have put onto the game? Yes. Yes, it does. Um... You know, if you know the rules, you can definitely play the games. Um, oh, alright, okay, so here we actually have to import things, so... Just invert, you know, put everything in here. These are custom models that basically need to be imported into the game from a Dropbox, so somebody actually made all these things modeled out and has loaded them to Dropbox. We gotta do this with 40 different things, don't we? Are we just going back to the same things here? Or? Actually, I have no clue. That might be an issue. Maybe if we just kind of exit out all of them. A 
Okay, I think this actually has like a random setup for everything. So officially, if things were loaded, this would be a dead winner setup. <laughs> but obviously, things are not perfect. So maybe we gotta keep going here. I think just because of the size and nature of the game, it's really hard to actually replicate it without actually doing this. Because we should have like custom like standees and stuff, right? Yeah, Kodiak, Colby, Greybeard. So these are all supposed to be the standees, I think, that we're trying to actually import. Warning, bandwidth error. Yeah, so obviously the game is just like, yeah, no, we can't have all of these in our game, so let's actually quit that. Find something else. Maybe a game that I haven't tried yet, which is Mice and Mystics. Um, so that's what I get for trying out mo untested mods here. It's usually nice if everything kind of loads in advance here. I really should stop the video, but this is kind of fun to show where everything's at. Because it gives you an idea of like what all work has to go into like making these tokens and assets and actually playing with them. Now, again, pretty great. So we actually have little notes here from the designer telling us that the grid setting for tiles is actually uh, three to two one. And do we actually have their? Okay, so they actually gave us like little character tokens instead of actually. kind of nifty. So like these are totally gridded a little bit. So actually I think we actually have to set up our game to um, changing the grid. So I think we can do that by going into our grid options here and setting it up for oh. Setting t grid for tiles, yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's for everything maybe besides these. Who knows? Because I see what they're trying to do. They're actually trying to go onto the grid placement here. So that thing, it, way everything stays where it should be. But as you can see, it's not entirely perfect either. So maybe we actually need to turn our grid off. Turn the lines on and off. You can show the different types of hex and stuff. Oh, that might be it. Maybe their hex grid. Maybe that's what the solution is. <laughs> so yeah, you could play things like Battle Lore or D and D. You can do tons of stuff just on this one little thing. I mean, even the game came with uh, this RPG set, which is pretty great. If you ever see somebody running a role-playing game on Tabletop Simulator, I think you're in for a good, interesting time. That is if the game does not crash. I'm sorry, folks. So, we're going to go ahead and end the video here while I still can. If it's going to continue to load here. Oh, hey, there it goes. Okay, sorry, folks. We had a just a huge amount of bandwidth needing to be used for that, so. Uh, as I was saying, they have actually a little D&D set here, so you've got little hydras and monsters that are actually animated, and you can import 3D meshes to do these, and uh, there you got your little heroes, and your little uh, bad guys that your characters can fight and, you know, fight against, so you got a few things that you can do if the two kind of respond when you click and hold them they got like a little walking animation for this guy this zombie's got a little attack animation ooh this big lizard guy probably looks like he's gonna bash something with his hammer and we can kinda mess with him a little bit so we can rotate him that way we can flip him yeah that's cool actually these things actually have a fun little thing where they can actually attack you can change their mode. And then you can actually tell him to die. Oh no, he's been defeated, but his model's still around. <laughs> and if they're set up for that, 
it's kind of a great little way of just uh, kind of giving you that actual role-playing game-like experience, and it comes with a lot of props, so you can start building your own little dungeon tiles here. So if you're a, if you're a DM like me, you kind of would love to have enough time to do something like this, but it can be a fairly impractical, but still fun, still fun. And of course, where's the character models? Well, that's the thing. You're gonna have to bring them in yourself. You're gonna have to bring in your own characters. But this is just so great that you actually have this kind of little thing that you can do. Oh no, he died. <laughs> and you can make him undie, which is great. Ah, uh, I, I love this tabletop simulator. It's definitely worth the time and money that people put into it. But again, you're going to get out of it what you put into it, so go out there, find mods, create mods, uh, bring more tabletop games to the world. Um, we want to see more of this stuff happening. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the recording off here. Thank you so much for watching our uh, demonstration of Tabletop Simulator. Uh, maybe in the future we'll actually have a few games set up on this that we can play with some friends online, and we'll record those for the show. Uh, let us know in the comments section, uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, if you like this or not, if this was a good demonstration of what Tabletop Simulator can do, even on a uh, kind of older PC. It still runs fairly well. Um, so, uh, with my next rig here, hopefully it'll run even better. And, hey, if you ever want to play uh, online Crokinole, uh, just shoot me an email or leave a comment. Uh, you can follow me on at Tigbun on Twitter. Uh... I'm usually on Steam as uh, Tigbun or Tig slash Bun right now. Uh, that's just kind of a fun way of me getting to interact with the community if you're in it, interested at all. Uh, maybe we can play some Secret Hitler or some other social deduction games. Uh, I know that's pretty hot right now.